Live on WFLA Now, this is Run for Fun with running enthusiast Lee Spann. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the WFLA, WFLA Now Stream Center for this week's episode of Run for Fun with Lee Spann. This is the show we created to help spread the idea that running can be fun. You just need a few tips to help keep you motivated so that you find that fun and also keep you as really as pain free as possible. Because we always say if it if it hurts, you're not going to keep doing it. So we're trying to keep you as pain free as possible. I'm your host, Lee Spann. I'm the meteorologist here at WFLA. But as you also heard, I'm a running enthusiast and um, we really just one of the one one of the ways we wanted to help you stay motivated is uh, through our virtual running group, and we keep gaining runners in our Strava run group. So right now we have 89 Ooh. runners. So what this is, Strava is a free app that we uh, that you can download on your phone and then carry with you when you go out for a walk or go out for a run, and it records when and where and what what you did so that other people can then ask you questions about it or give you uh, kudos or uh, and then we have our own section our WFLA run for fun section so you go to the groups you find the club and this is our club WFLA run for fun and that's how we have our 89 members and it's been really fun to see people interacting um, within that as well and We've also heard from a lot of our viewers. So this is uh, Mike who on Facebook, because last week's show was about um, starting up a running group. We had one of our viewers who would ask us questions. He wanted to start a running group with his church. And so we brought on Peter, and then Mike responded with a great show on running in a group. I would highly recommend it. I've made many new friends and being in a group. And one thing we have in common is a love of running. So again, that's what we um, uh, we hope that you know you find this camaraderie this love of running by not only um, going out and running but also part of the running group and that's where we're going to bring in coach maria coach maria Hello. is part of my running group how are you i'm good i was i was just thinking about that comment because i i had a group of um girls that ran together mm -hmm. and we went on a girls trip and we decided we were going to do something not running and we were just going to go shopping and we realized quickly on the trip that the only thing in common we had was running because we oh, we were rough. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah, I was like, wow, how did we not know about each other like this? But well, did you keep? Now the question would be, did you keep running oh, yes. after the girls' trip? Yes, okay. we did. But our definitions of where we wanted to eat and what we how we like to shop and. Some people like to swear and some people didn't. And it was people being well, offended. Marie, and I'm like, how is this happening? Maria, which, which, which side of the aisle do you follow? I'm telling you, I'm definitely one that doesn't swear. <laughs> <laughs> and we all laugh. But yeah. <laughs> hey, I've, I haven't sworn on the podcast yet. You so. have not. Yeah, I feel like you, I'm winning at life. <laughs> really? I, I, my boss thanks you <laughs> for that. Um, so uh, people can see at the bottom of the screen, tip, tips for running in the dark. That was one of the... Um, uh, because of the time change. Oh yeah. It a lot more. I mean, a lot of people go out and try to exercise before they go to work. Sure. And last week, you know, at six 30 in the morning, it was bright sunshine. And this week it is dark. And you saw that yeah. specifically this morning. Well, I, you know, I, we take pictures in our track group <laughs> in the morning cause it's super important. And this morning it was difficult to take a picture. It was we were just getting light last week, and so now we're back in the dark. Yeah, so um, I did want to show you, um, because this was something Maria asked about, the sunrise times. So just as you start to plan, you know, when and where and how you're going to run, tomorrow the sun rises at 739. So, again, it's still pretty late. I mean, if most people have to be at work or 8 to 9, mm -hmm. that's, you know, you're not running or you're not exercising at 739 because you have to shower. So that's where it's going to still be quite dark. But – for the this again, these are Tampa, this is for Tampa. Other places in the country, it's going to be earlier. It's going to be later. Yeah, but sure. um, in April first, so just in a couple of weeks, it's seven twenty in the morning. But by the middle of April, you're back to about that seven a.m. and that sunrise. Seems so late, but it is sunrise. I know. Not and there, there's that civil twilight time too, yeah, where, where you get a little light. It's it's bright enough, mm -hmm. but by when it's a, when the sun rises at seven o five, by like six forty five, it, it's enough where you don't need any extra light. And then by May first, it's six fifty in the morning, and then. By May 15th, it's 640 in the morning. It's, and then it's starting. It's still getting a little cooler, right? At that time, like right before the sun gets on. It feels like it's. So unless there's something major going on, like a cold front or, or some something influencing the weather, 
the coolest time of the day is actually right the, in the moments after sunrise. Oh, okay. The moments right after sunrise. So, uh, would you like a little? Would you like a little weather yes, um, explanation? Yes, of course on I that? do. I okay. love this. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the sun rays are shortwave radiation coming from the sun, uh -huh. and they're too small wa of wavelength for us to heat up anything. Okay. It, it has to. Those solar rays have to hit the Earth. And the, the earth, earth then has to re-emit oh, okay. them as a, with a longer wave radiation. Oh, that makes sense. So uh, all night long, the earth is emitting the radiation that it got during the day. So that's why it keeps getting cooler because oh. it's getting less and less of that radiation still available. So there's that moment when the sun rays haven't had time to absorb and re-emit. And oh, re so there's this, unless again, there's a cold front or something out there, but the, the, the coolest time of the day would be in the moments right after sunrise where the, where the solar rays haven't had time to, to absorb and get re-emitted. And so it's, and it's, and the earth has emitted all of the light that, I mean, and rays that it could have gotten from last, from the day before. That's awesome. And then when the sun comes out, then you turn into a vampire then because, we turn it's, <laughs> because it's way too hot to run. So don't do it. Yes. It, <laughs> whew, especially in the Tampa area once that sun yes. comes up. So we're going to bring in Morgan Lowers. She is our 4 p.m. producer here at WFLA. And uh, because she does exercise and try to run before work. And so you probably felt it today. Were you out running today or yesterday? Yesterday, yes. Okay. Um, today, no. That's okay. <laughs> but, but what a difference, right? Yes, yes. Especially with, I think we have a little bit of a cold front coming in. So it was, it was definitely chillier than expected. But the, the difference in the sun, definitely for sure. And how bright it is. And so before we get into, again, we're going to talk about the tips for running in the dark. But we always ask people how they got into running. And you have an amazing story. <laughs> I love to hear about it. So, uh, you know, you always an athlete. Yes. I grew up playing softball, played it for about 15 years, um, played in college, everything. Then when I retired, um, obviously. Retired. Uh, sorry, not retired. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, retired, yeah, yeah. Retired. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, once I retired, I obviously wanted to stay fit. I stayed in the gym, more weight based. Um, and then me and my boyfriend are actually long distance and he lives in um, the Dominican Republic. And he was like, what if we train for a marathon together? Um, definitely not a runner, was never a runner still. Uh, hard to say that I am a runner, you know, but I did run a full marathon, but that was something that we did together. Um, while we were separate, we trained separately and then we ran together. I went down to the Dominican and ran it with him. So that's yeah. how I got into running. So you, I mean, I, I say that you went from couch to marathon. That is, I did the exact program yeah. that was labeled couch to marathon. Yeah. And wow. What, mm -hmm. um, was he a runner? No, he, oh, he played. He was also he played baseball in college, so he definitely has that athletic background. Oh, okay, but he was never a runner as well. So y'all both ran ninety feet, correct? And that yeah. was it. <laughs> yes, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Unless you did something bad and then you had to run laps, correct? Yeah, so we, we talk <laughs> about that. We hate the fact that yeah. that our sport, it, you know, people looked out. Uh, people had this bad feeling about it because it was sort of their punishment. But yeah. you turned that around. Well. That was definitely my view. Once I got out of college, I was like, I am never running again. Like, I do not like it. Um, just because it was so punishment based while I was in school. Yeah. Um, but then you get into those long distance and it's a whole different feeling. And I can say that like, I was like, wow, I cannot believe I just did 26 miles. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? And uh, so, but uh, so thank you for joining us. Yeah. I know that, uh, that you are, you didn't stop. You might not, you're still you're right. still running. You're yes. still fun. now. Do you find it fun? Because we want to we want to keep asking people like what what do you need to know to make it fun? I do find it okay, fun. Good. Um, and it was such a mental transition for me because I had such a bad take on running prior mm -hmm. to doing the marathon training. Um, and so for me, it's a moment of you know, whether how long ever the distance could be. It's for me, it's like those moments where I'm just to myself. My phone's on Do Not Disturb. It's me. I'm listening to music, podcasts, watching a movie in my <laughs> ears. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Well, that makes me very happy. <laughs> yes. If you think about it, there's very few things in life that we can do that, mm -hmm. where we can just completely zone out. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. And that definitely, that, that's a good avenue for and it. And you had no injury issues during all of this? I mean... Obviously, you were a very athletic person to begin the with. The only thing that I had never experienced, even I had shoulder surgery, I had all these things like in college, my feet, like the blisters I would get from running, that was probably the only thing. I had to buy like fancy socks that were honestly life changer mm -hmm. um, and shoes. Shoes were incredibly important yeah. for me. So, yeah, yeah we've, we've talked about that. <laughs> yeah. What to wear. 
you know, it, things to buy, good socks. Yes. I mean, it's surprising all the cotton socks that are just, just terrible. Yes. It cotton was, is rotten. It was <laughs> literally a entire game changer for me when I switched socks. So, yeah. Well, the, we are. I'm, I'm very glad that you find it fun. So today's topic um, is the is running in the dark, and there's a couple of things we'll, we'll talk about. But um, obviously, the overview would be you got to be able to be seen, you got to be able to see, and you got to be able to stay safe. And let's talk. We'll start with ways that you guys have found to to literally see because tripping and crack monsters that jump out and get you and make you fall down on the sidewalk happen even in the daylight. So so what are the ways, um, Maria, that you find that you can um, see? Uh, well, a lot of my runners wear headlamps. Um, I am not a big lamp person, um, or I should say I wasn't until Petra um, saved me from an alligator early in the morning at one point. Mm -hmm. um, we were running on the Upper Tampa Bay Trail, and I didn't have a light, and she did have a light. And there was an alligator that was literally right in the path, like staring at us. And, and, his, she, and she just put her arm out. She said, coach. And then I stopped and I sweat a little bit. And I was like, wow. Um, so now I do tend to carry, I don't usually do a headlamp, but I'll carry like a light on my phone or something. If just so that you can see around me, because I actually do think your, your eyes do adjust to the light. So sometimes you can see better without a light. I know that sounds crazy, but there does have to be some kind of back backlit yeah so some some kind of love um, yeah. but it, especially for people like me who tend to I, trip on the on the sidewalk yeah. a good bit even some you know something that lights up so that you know where the cracks in the sidewalk yeah, you are. have to be able to see your feet and um we were running at safety harbor la two weekends ago and we we were going we went down the ream trail which is gets very very dark and someone had a, a, a flashlight that also had it hooked onto their hand so huh. you weren't try having to actually hold it the whole time. I thought that was really uh, quite. Does it move in back and forth? Because that makes well, me a crazy person. It would person. still move because yeah. you're still moving your whole body. So uh, if it's just you, maybe it's not so bad. But when you're trying to light it for other people, yeah. there's a strobing effect. And you can give you a little bit yeah. of a headache when it moves a lot. Yeah. But, I, but I like the fact that you didn't have to grip it. Like, you yeah, know, you didn't have smart. to. You, know, you, could, you could have your hand open and because it's attached to your hand. But that I was, do think yeah. the light on your the headlamp is probably the best option. Mm -hmm. It stays the most steady. Sometimes it can go in your eyes to the other runners. It's yeah. a little bit yeah. bright sometimes, but it's okay. Yeah. I like I like the headlamp the best. Yeah. I think I, I I I actually mine clips on my belt. Okay. Cuz it has a it has a clip and so if you if you had a visor, you can also you could use that yeah, as, that's a, a, as a good option. But too. then I I do because again, I don't. All I need it is to is to look at the ground. I don't need to yeah. see. I don't need to see what's happening around me. I just need to be able to Except see. Except if there's sure. alligators, Lee, you do need to see them. <laughs> well, hopefully or armadillos. They yes. Can, yeah. Hopefully it's on the ground. Yeah. And not climbing the alligator. So yeah, as I long mean, as I can was, see what's on the it ground. It was in my periphery. Yeah. I don't think I would have seen it, even if I had had like, because it was just like on the side. But who knows what would happen if you ran in front of an alligator or stepped on it? Yeah, yeah. They was... <laughs> and their whole their their whole vibe is that they are very still and they blend in with the environment very well. That's, that's how their they, vibe. That's their vibe. <laughs> alligator vibe. <laughs> so Morgan, what did you um, what did you do on Monday to, to kind of compensate for the for the darkness? Um, honestly, so I I live about a mile away from where somewhere that you can just easily hop on a trail and run miles and miles and miles. Um, I don't do that anymore. I just drive to Bayshore um, and I park there so I know Bayshore is well lit. Uh, yeah, that is my best remedy now, now for do you, it. Yeah, yeah. and will you, will, do you plan to go back to your um, to your trail when it's brighter or are you just going to, yeah? Yeah, when it's brighter for sure, but honestly just for the safety concern of me, yeah, I, I just am going to drive to Bayshore. And Bayshore, uh, if, you're, if you happen to be listening to this from um, – other parts of the country it's a it's the longest continuous sidewalk at least in north america it's about four and a half miles almost five miles and it's very well lit and mm -hmm. there's a few crack monsters there's not quite as many there so uh it is if there's a like what morgan's doing okay in my neighborhood it's dark my neighborhood could be a problem you you could drive somewhere right. and you just have to get up just a, a smidge 
change it adds about I would say 30 minutes to the routine of of running and getting there parking getting on the trail and coming back it's about 30 minutes. It's definitely yeah. worth it. Definitely sure. worth it. Not have to worry about it. Especially and it's a and that goes to our second point about being safe. Yes. With the way that Bayshore is created, there's water on one side, so you can mm-hmm. see for miles if there's something coming or some some body mm-hmm. coming that may not that may make you feel uncomfortable. You can see them for a very long way away, and that is helpful. You can just turn around and mm-hmm. go the other way. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's also quite a few runners, walkers, mm-hmm. bikers on Bay Shore at all times. Yeah. So that also gives me comfort because there's mm-hmm. just so many people out there. Yes. I definitely agree with, is there, um, just for people around here, Maria, is there somewhere else like Bay Shore that's that well lit? Cause there's a, so many trails I mean, and so many thing. wonderful places to I mean, run, but yeah. the, but the, the lit and the, the, the safe feeling, I mean, you know, the, the $6 million houses yeah. on the other side of you make you feel Safe, yeah. a little bit more of a sense of security there. Yeah, I mean, we we ran in West Chase a lot, which mm-hmm. is very lit. Um, the sidewalks are lit, although people fall a lot on those sidewalks too. I mean, it's it's mostly a tripping hazard when you're running in the dark, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if there's street lamps, that's helpful. Um, and it's just nice to be out where people can see what's going on and people are around and there's cars around in case anything happens. And that is, yes, and that's something to think to, to keep in mind that, you know, in your own neighborhood, you know, like what Morgan had to do, she had to decide, do I feel safe in the dark mm-hmm. here for, for various reasons, you know, for people, for animals, for falling hazards, all, you know, so if you don't feel like your neighborhood is, then, then you can just drive, like, look around. I mean, yeah. look around for a neighborhood that does have those things that make you feel more safe. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of gated communities that have a lot of safe places to run um i think the biggest thing for me about the dark is the cars that can't see you yeah and if you're running in your neighborhood and you know it well you tend to just kind of relax and zone out and assume that everybody knows that you're there but it's very difficult for cars to see you in in the dark uh if you're going to cross a road make sure you make eye contact with the person that's driving before you run in front of them because a lot of times they just don't Uh. see you and there have been so many people hit by cars crossing a street. And that's running. daytime and nighttime. That's yes. any time you're crossing. Because yes. they are looking for cars. They They're are not, not looking, looking for, for people. people. Yeah, yes. I will not cross anywhere unless I make direct eye contact with the person or I go around the back side of the car. So you you and I were just talking. So the, the headlamp, we would say that's, I mean, yes, that can help drivers to, to see you. But that's mainly for you to be able to yes. see. There are ways that if to make sure that other people, Mm -hmm. drivers specifically, can see you. And a lot of Mm -hmm. our clothes just do that now. Thankfully, the the manufacturers are making them. Yeah, we have, there's a lot of clothes you can wear that have reflective um, panels on the front Mm -hmm. so that it will light up when a car, but still, even when you're, if you're crossing a a road and the car is not facing you, they're not going to see that reflective gear. So just be sure you're aware of your surroundings. You have to be more aware in the dark than you do in the light. You just have to be. And go back to Morgan now. So um, when, you, when it gets back to, what have you noticed about cars and, and their ability to see you when you are running in, either in your neighborhood or when you go to Bayshore? They're honestly normally, we have such like distracted drivers that sometimes they don't even notice the runners. Like you said, they're more, more paying attention to the cars. So I really refrain from trying to cross streets in general. Like I said, I can just get on, you know, Riverwalk, connect to Bay Shore, and not have to worry about even having to consider about other drivers. Yeah, and, uh, and what Maria was saying um, that I definitely do is when you're at that intersection with them, you just go behind them because mm-hmm. they may be looking yeah. left to, you know, the cars that are coming to, to you know, so that they don't pull out in mm-hmm. front of somebody, but you're coming from the right. So when they don't see anybody, they so I just immediately will go in and behind yeah, and people think oh that'll never happen to me but honestly i've seen so many runners hit actually bikers too so many bikers cyclists mm-hmm. yes. just hit mostly because people are on their phones and they're distracted and they're they they can easily go into your lane if you're running in the road without noticing they're doing it because they're texting oh. and that's terrifying it's, it, oh, it's terrifying it's terrifying it's, it's one of the reasons why i stopped biking Which, as if much. You, yeah if you are in the road make sure that you are facing traffic so that they can see you 
And you, yes, and you can, they're not, they're not coming up behind you either. Yes. And uh, which goes to my, one of my final points is in the dark, but even when it's light, you may want to go earphone free. Oh, yeah. Because you want to be able to hear that car or hear that person coming up behind you that you couldn't hear if you, you want to hear earphone. yourself get hit by a car yeah. before you get hit by a car. <laughs> but, you may hear, but you may hear that engine yeah. roaring or you may hear the steps yeah. coming up behind you. Again, you can choose to not use the headphones ever, but it's one of the things that makes running mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Is so, uh, But maybe if you are in an, a darker area, leave out, leave out the headphones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? because it's not just it's not just you know somebody abducting you. It's right. also just hearing what's behind you. It's hearing cars. It's hearing you know alligators. <laughs> I mean, you got to be able to you yeah, got to be able to hear. They 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 do hiss. They do growl. Yes. And so yeah, that's and dogs. I mean, dogs you know, dogs are barking. One. I mean, or they, dogs can get off their leash and they can. Yep, that's happened before. Um, you it's know. A, 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 an interesting story, um, Beb. Who you know, a, an Olympian runner. Yeah. Um, he was out on Bayshore running because that's what he likes to do, and a lady's dog got off the leash and bit another lady. And so people came up to to, to help, and basically he was like, I, "I'll go get a car," like knowing that he was by far the fastest person out yeah. there. Like I, I'll run. He also doesn't, you know, he's like, I, yeah. "I know where my car is. I can run to it and get it." And so he took this lady to uh, to an urgent care, but. Again, that's on Bayshore. I mean, we're again, we yeah. think it's we think it's safe, but because um, any dog can get off the leash at any point, yeah. so that's why. And it's not a bad idea to talk about what you would do in a in a situation mm -hmm. because I've had numerous times where somebody's twisted an ankle in the middle of a run and hasn't been able to get back. I've run to go get people. Um, it you just kind of have to have a plan in case something happens. Because especially in the dark, twisting an ankle is probably, I mean, I've had a million runners have that happen, like twist an ankle. Just a few weeks ago, Stephanie twisted her ankle on UTBT, and, and she was in the middle, and we had to go drive somewhere to go get her. Um, and it's just, it happens often. It's not something. And again, that's daytime or nighttime. These yeah. are the same thing, like, you know, yes. the, to, have, to have run through scenarios in your head mm -hmm. um, that it would, would help out just so that it, it's you're not so panicked when it happens. Well, I also, I always text my mom or my family before I go for a run, and I'm like, hey, this is where I'm running. This is how, my distance, yeah. just so you know. So they know, and they also have my location as well. In case something, you know, dangerous does happen or injuries, they know exactly where I am and how to, or, or at least know when to be a parent that I'm running. It's yes. also good to have those um, emergency things on your arm. What are those called? You know, the little... Oh, the road ID? The road ID. Road so, IDs are good, too. So that, and that just, I mean, if, if terrible, you know, you really can't tell people, the road ID is a, um, a like, a bracelet that has yeah. your name and your... In, Emergency any, contact. Yeah, it has... Anything you need yeah, on What there. hospital you want to go to mm -hmm. in case you get hit and somebody doesn't know who you are. Because a lot of times yeah. we don't carry that stuff on us. No. I mean, I've I do... heard of that. I, yeah, so road yeah. ID, and road you can, ID, and you can even put it... I think you can even get one for your shoe, like, yeah. if you don't mm. want to wear it on your on your, um, mm -hmm. on your your wrist. But it's... Uh, yeah, road ID is very, very helpful. Um, I, I actually um, did a story... It's probably been five or six years ago about being safe while you're running, and I talked to one runner who said... I've all... In her mind, again, she plays out the scenario because... If I if I felt like someone was taking me, I would I would at least take my road ID off and drop it so people would know this is the oh, last yeah. mm -hmm. place that I was. But again, it's that giving it some thought. What mm -hmm. would I do if? And she said, I know, you know, it's not going to help me wherever I'm going, but mm -hmm. at least someone would know the last place I was. I'd rip that thing off and drop it. I was like, that's a yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things that we can do to keep ourselves safer, mm -hmm. and also men can stop attacking us. <laughs> well, there's also <laughs> that. Uh, for there sure. is also that. I, I mean, I just have to say it because I get annoyed that we always have to talk about it, but we do have to talk about it. But yeah. we can also say men stop attacking us. Yeah, maybe, maybe just <laughs> you I, had a scary thing I happen did. to you. I had. I was running on Riverwalk here, and I had three guys. It was honestly, it was pretty dark. The sun had not completely risen yet, um, and I had three men who were following me. And thankfully, I have AirPod Pros that I've been running with. Um, and I, I always keep the noise case cancellation off. Like I yeah. never have the noise cancellation on. And thankfully, I don't want to say that saved my life, but that definitely helped me stay alert to, that they were behind me. Um, and 
yeah, it was a really scary moment. And honestly, I didn't run in the mornings for about a month after that because it just, I was like, is it worth it? And the answer is no. So, well, yeah, yeah. Um, so I called my mom immediately and I was like, hey, this is where I am. This is the color of clothing that these men are wearing. I'm running as fast as I can home um, just to at least get into an area where it is, I would say, safer, but just with more people because the connection, that one mile from my apartment to Riverwalk is, I would say, a little sketchy. Um, so, yeah, that was... How did your mom react? Um, well, she was terrified. Yes. And she was honestly a main reason that I didn't run for a month just because she was so scared, mm -hmm. um, especially because she lives in Virginia. So it's not like she could just hop in a car and pick me up. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was just a moment where it was like, OK, either drive to Bay Shore or I always had a running partner. His name was Drew, but he was he works in the medical field. So his schedule changed rapidly and you still got to get the training done. Yeah. So, yeah, so that that's running buddy or... Sometimes I will, if I feel afraid, I will walk into a house, like, not like, 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 not, like not, yours. not like, yeah. but I just pretend like it's my house and mm -hmm. I like pretend I'm getting my keys out and I pretend like, you know, so that yeah. they think I'm home. So that's smart. Yeah. And I've done, I've, I've done yeah. that as well. Like just, you know, yep. Like, mm -hmm. act like, you know what you're doing, walking yeah. up toward the, you know, and just, and, and no, you know, a hundred times or 99 times out of a hundred, that person's just going to walk on by, mm -hmm. but you are able to assess that situation. And again, daytime or nighttime, things like this, or just yeah. running through those scenarios. Well, and I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, trust your intuition. Even if you're wrong, right? it's much better to be a little bit afraid and a little bit alert than to have to be like, you know, I'm I'm sure it's fine and then have something happen. Yeah. And so sure. um, what Morgan was just saying, uh, one of the, another tip for running in the dark is to not. So now, yeah. now yeah. With, it, with, this, with this daylight shift, Again, we can't, I, I, I don't really like calling it daylight saving because we lost it in the morning, but yeah. you get it in the evening. And so mm -hmm. shift your life around, maybe yeah. go for, maybe spend more time in the next couple of weeks in those evening runs. Because again, there is daylight and mm -hmm. it is, but it is just not when a lot of people like mm -hmm. to get their exercising mm -hmm. done. Yeah. And it's kind of hard in Florida because it's just so hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although night, sometimes the differential between the dew point and the temperature may get a little bit better at night, I think, sometimes. And, and a little bit of a sea breeze. Yeah. Too. There'll be a little bit more of a breeze. Sometimes it's so still in the morning. Oh, gosh. But yeah. again, once you get into the into, um, you know, if, if, like we were just showing the, the um, sunrise times and we don't have to wait that much longer yeah. to where it's nice and bright, basically, before mm -hmm. you get well, well enough to get to work. Yeah. But it's just really in this next like month month and a half where yeah. you might want to switch it up see what it's like running in the evening i uh, don't particularly love it but you know if that meant staying safe yeah. then you, you would do that and also don't let your guard down in the in the light either yes. i really feel like actually in memphis just a few weeks ago somebody tried to abduct a, a female runner in broad daylight it was like four o'clock and she had a dog with her yeah. so like don't don't let your guard down it's not worth it to be able to listen to some good music with, with noise canceling. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, and you can actually can you call just by saying call mom like with you, when you had the we said you had that. I air did not. Phone. I used my phone to okay. call her. Um, but at that moment, I always had a I always have a belt with me that I put my phone in. But for some reason, I had my phone in my hand at that exact oh. moment, and it worked out well. But yeah. there are new headphones that I've seen a lot of runners wear that I don't personally have, but it's one that wrap around your ear yeah. and in. I like and play. Do you like those? I is love that, them. Okay, I really and they're not a, that expensive. I think they're maybe one hundred and thirty dollars or so. Yeah, they're called aftershocks. There yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, they're so good because they leave your ear open and yeah. and it's bone conduction, so it's right here. You can hear and it's really good sound, but you can hear everything. Yeah, you hear you hear all the music, all yeah. the mm -hmm. all the you know podcast yeah. or whatever it is you're yeah. listening uh -huh. to, but you can also there is nothing in your ear. So that's so I'll, I'll let Maria show like where about where it is. On, on yeah, your, it's right. It, it comes like goes around the back of your ear and it sits right here like on the, right edge on of the your, temple. Yeah, like, on the temple. And you can, it's really clear sound. They've come a long way and they're not heavy. They're Bluetooth. So mm -hmm. you don't have to have a cord. Um, I love my I have like three pairs of aftershocks. I love them. Yeah, but that's a good way that if you want to yeah. continue mm -hmm. listening to, to listening to your movies. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but still also being being safe. And again, mm -hmm. that's daytime or nighttime. I mean, these running, you know, running in the dark, you still want to be able yes. to be able, you still want to be able to hear everything mm -hmm. in the daytime as well. And those aftershocks are getting more and more popular. As you yeah. said, you've been seeing mm -hmm. them everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. So I do like the road ID drop in the road ID. That's kind of yeah, that's smart. Yeah. Idea. That's so smart. Just uh, again, uh, because uh, you know, Maria, you've now that's the second Memphis 
Oh yeah, them. you had a terrible one in Memphis. Yeah, there and was I like had friends four, there too. Yeah. It's scary. And, and Maria, you coached there and ran yeah. there, and um, it can be very scary. But that's um, but that's why we we run through the scenarios. Yeah, we do the best we can with the tips to run in the dark. We want to make sure we can be seen. You can run with mace. It's pretty easy to run with mace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you if can, it makes you feel better. That's what I, my pepper spray is on. Just like the road ID, it's a Velcro around my wrist. Um, so I don't I don't have to hold it, mm-hmm. but you know. It's there. Did you it, see that woman there. in Tampa that got attacked in the in the yes in it, her gym? We we've been running oh. this. Yes. Yeah, oh so she's my been, gosh! Yeah, she eight was awesome. Minutes. Eight she minutes. fought that man for eight minutes. minutes. I mean, yeah. and even, she's she's been offering like free classes now for like self oh, defense really? and Good stuff. Yeah, her. it's been incredible. Yeah, Which we did that in our run group. We offered mm-hmm. that was fun. Yeah, I really thought that bring, was bring that helpful. back a little bit. But she wants to like her her goal in life was to start gyms to, to be part of the owner of a gym and she's like I will definitely, you know, do free free de- self defense courses and to watch 8 minutes of her fight this man yeah, off. She fought him. It yeah. was very very impressive. So yeah. again, and that was in the gym. She was she led him in mm-hmm. she because thought she thought he missed his he didn't have his Well, she had seen him there before. It wasn't like oh, a complete okay. stranger. Yeah. So whether he, you know, but so she's like I definitely recognized him and how many of us would do that? Yeah. That we see somebody who's been in the gym with us before. It's like, yeah. yeah yep. Come on in. Mm-hmm. And I would tell you it's okay to be rude. If you're uncomfortable and you're the only, she was the only person in that yep. gym that day, probably for, I would be uncomfortable and it's okay to keep them out yep. or to leave and come back another time. Like it's whatever you're comfortable with as a female. Yep. And um, yeah. Avery Cotton, our morning anchor, not long after this, we, were, we did a story on the free self-defense classes that were coming. And when I talked to Avery after she had gone through it, she said, you know, the most awkward thing was standing in front of this man saying, get away from me. Because, you know, you're not yeah. taught to do that. You're taught to be oh, like, yeah. okay, th- you know, I'm sure this person's mm-hmm. fine. But she was like, and he goes, that's what we're trying to do. As awkward as you feel with me, think about if it was a real stranger. Like, you need to be able to actively say, get away from me. That should be the very first thing you do. Whether yeah. And if they're not going to, you know, most people would then leave. But she said that, I thought of all the things that were the most hard, oh, the yeah. hardest for her was to say, get away from me. Wow. I felt like, when I had my little kids, we always teach our kids, like, go go say hi to your uncle. Go give hugs to your uncle. And I just, I didn't do that with my kids. I'm like, if she doesn't want to hug you, she don't have to hug you. Because I just want, I want them to, we, we need to change that in our society. That right, yeah. We need to be comfortable. And if somebody's not comfortable, if you're not comfortable with somebody in your space, we shouldn't just because they're your uncle or your brother or whatever, that you have to hug them or have to. You, you gave Abby a voice. Yes, I did. She's, a, she's right over here. Yeah. <laughs> Home from college yeah. for a little bit. And we brought her into the stream center. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. So we want to go back. If we want to kind of um, go back over sort of the, the topics that we've talked about, of course, it's the um, just for the next couple of, of weeks, while, while it is certainly going to be dark in the morning, but then you can use some of these tips anytime. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to see the ground. You want to be able to, you want Vehicles to be able to see you and the drivers in the vehicles to be able to see you. And you want to be you know, cognizant of a- animals and strange people, strange yeah. animals and strange people. So the best way to do that is to uh, be alert, choose ways to be able to hear whether mm-hmm. you use the aftershocks or you don't use the no- noise mm-hmm. canceling, being able to hear your surroundings, be aware of your surroundings. And how about grab one of those running partners? We've, been, we've talked right. a lot about running roots. <laughs> we, I mean, there's... Don't go alone. I mean, that would That's be very helpful. helpful. And then only one of you needs a light. And then, you know, it, it's just a little bit more, mm-hmm. um, a collective is nice. Yeah. And if you're running on, even in the middle of the day, if you're running on back roads, we don't have a ton of those in Tampa, but in Maine, when I'm running on back roads, there's a lot of turns and twists and stuff. Make sure that you actually cross the road and you're on the other side of the road if there's a bend. The best way that I do it is make sure that the car can always see you because if you if you're going around a bend and the car can't see you you're going to get hit Ugh. you're going to get hit by a car so go on the other side just just until you can see and then once you can see the car coming move back over to the other side 
Because a lot of people will just say, no, I'm supposed to stay I'm facing traffic. But no, on a turn like that, you're not supposed to actually. So you use some common sense. Yes. But we don't sometimes because we're <laughs> right. type A. We're like, we have to stay on the right side of the road. <laughs> right. But also, we don't want to be hit by a car. Yeah. So do do what needs to be done. And, um, and then if you have to move to an evening run in the next couple of weeks, Try it out. You might like it. Too. I love evening runs. You like, do like I really, yeah. I like ending my day like that. You know, I, I run directly after work. And then um, if I run in the evenings, I run directly after work, eat dinner, shower, and That's go to bed. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, is, that is very nice. Well, thank you, Morgan. We're yeah. so glad that you find running fun. And, yeah, thanks for having me. And, um, Morgan produces the 4 p.m. newscast here at WFLA and uh, ran her first marathon in November. I she, did. Uh, is, is Morgan running the um, airport 5K with everybody? I am. She's the one oh. who spearheaded it. Oh, look at you, Morgan. I did, actually. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. It'll be really fun. It'll. I, I think there's like 10 or 15 of us doing it together. So. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. So um, it is. if it's hot, that's okay. If it's, I like sweating, too. Yeah, I think sweating is good. I, 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 I really agree. enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. So I don't know. Get out there, face the heat, and go have fun running. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much. Thank we you, will Morgan. Be back. Yeah, yes, thank we'll be you. back next Tuesday um, for, with more ways to make running fun. That's right. That's right. All the ways. <laughs> All the ways. Thank you, guys. Have a great Thanks. one. Bye-bye. <laughs>